Hey there, this is Greg Koopman, and I'm going to show you a problem that I've run into recently, or actually it's always been there, just I, I realized I need to work on it. Um, but when doing ETL and this kind of work, uh, and trying to develop reports, when you have very wide tables, when I say wide tables, I mean lots and lots and lots of columns, okay? And let's say you're trying to analyze that data and you're, you know, it's your first time looking at it, you don't know what's exactly going on. You're trying to get your hands around the data and understand it. Okay, so as you see here, I'm in Power BI uh, desktop. And this is just an example from um, AdventureWorks. It's not a super wide table. It's about 32 columns, I think. But it's wide enough. And, um, to, you know, to show as an example, I run into a lot of, a lot of them are 100, 200 columns wide. And they're just so difficult to look at. Um, basically, <clears throat> you get this kind of screen here, um, you know, a table, and you really want to look at it not in this way because you can't get all the information on one screen, right? I, then I have to scroll across and figure out where I'm at. I mean, you bring it into Excel, I guess you do that too, but sometimes you want to be able to analyze it in Power BI. And I couldn't find a good form type of, you know, vertical uh, layout for the columns. It always seems to be horizontal, or if it is vertical, I have to kind of drag and drop every every column which is as you see over here <coughs> a lot of columns right so I don't want to have to go through that pain and suffering and you shouldn't either so that's what I'm here to show you is to show you how you can take what I, you see on this tab where you have to scroll across and again this isn't the worst it could be a lot worse than this but and then instead of that let's do it this way where I can go ahead I'm clicking on the bottom tab where I can go ahead and just click on a single row and see all the columns you know in a vertical manner here and if they have notes and that kind of thing I can just put them in another table so it's not a very complex setup um, but there is a little complexity in the back where you have to kind of where you have to use some SQL and you have to create a um, key value pair all right which I'm going to go about showing you so basically what this particular um, model looks like the, the data model for the first tab basically I have the regular table okay I still keep the regular table around all right, because there's a lot of functionality I can do with that, right? And but the other tables, which is these are the same table. I just use them two different ways. Um, actually, no, they're not exactly the same. They have different data them in them. Um, but these <coughs> are based on the key um, key value pair. Okay. So what I did was I took the data from this table and converted it into um, key value pairs. So it looks more like this. So here's again, I'm looking at the uh, table view of this. So I go to employee. I get the full table, right? All right. And actually, if you look, you know, if you're in uh, it's, uh, AdventureWorks DW 2016, um, I also added two extra columns to it just so I have some notes there so I could illustrate, you know, because that's when you get a bunch of text in a couple uh, columns, it gets really messy. It messes up a lot of the control of the table, too. So that's why I did this. As you see, it's in Latin, which I do not speak. Um, but I, that, um, I went to a, a site called Maka, Makadu or Makaru, and what it, it's uh, for building mock, it's in Makaru, mock data. So, it, you know, I, I downloaded a bunch of their data, so their samples, and it gave me an ID. I just matched them up with the employee ID, so it was really simple to stick them in here. All right, so that's the, that table. Now, so now let's look at the value pair table. Obviously, this table, let's say it's, I'm not sure how many there were, but let's say there were a couple hundred employees. Well, now the value, um, the value key value um, pair is going to be 200 rows times the number of columns times 300 or rather 30 columns so you do the math I guess it's 600 or something uh, from two, 20 from 200 rows it goes to like 6,000 rows when you break it out so something like that but you can check on me check check to see if I'm right or not. so here it is here's a the key value pairs here and if I just scroll down further just start seeing some values in here and as you see, there's a key which represents the column, right, in the more unnormalized. This is like super normalized when you go to key, uh, value key pairs. I always, get, I always mess up on that word or term. But anyway, so basically this is what I've done. I've taken the table, the dim employee table, the fat one, and made it skinny by, you know, making it, but make it skinny but much taller, right, a lot more rows. Okay, and then this one here is the same concept, but instead of doing... Um, Instead of this, I brought in my notes this way. Okay, so my notes are over here. Not as not as much in that one, but then I use that for the separate table. But 
when you look at the model, they're all automatically using the key. So you need a primary key when you do this. Um, so look, they, they join on the primary key and the rest is magic, right? All right, so let's go and look at the report again. So here's the one that, that I don't like, at least in many situations. Uh, it says two, I have to do two. I, don't, I want to see everything on one screen, right? I want to see all the columns on one screen. Um, and this one I do like more. And, and so, you know, everyone everyone has its own situations. All right, so if I click on F, Arafin Zainal, uh, or Zainal Arafin, I guess it's uh, first name. Let me put my first name up here real quick. Okay, that way I can show you here. We need a Ben Shoof. And here's her information in that record that she has. And here's her Latin notes of one and two. And it's very easy to see everything about her on one screen instead of having to scroll across. Okay, I've done that to death. Let me move over and show you how the code to do this on a table. Okay, so the hard part here is taking the table, all right? So in SQL Server, I have a table, the employee's table. Taking that table and make it in, converting it into a uh, key value pair table, okay? So that's what we have to do. So bear with me, and we're going to jump jump over to SQL Server now. Okay, so I'm over in SQL Server, and I'm going to show you. Let's see what I'm going to show you. So what we're going to do is start here. So this is the code that you're going to want to use, all right? Again, first of all, you got to make sure you have a key inside of that uh, the table you're going to um, normalize, okay? Now, this also could probably be done with an unpivot and that kind of thing. I just thought this technique, I saw some of this on the internet, I adjusted and made a couple, um, you know, changes to it. But um, this looked pretty good. I like this approach better. It seems simple, more simple and easier to code. Actually, it takes care of the code. So, basically, I'm not going to go into this in real detail, but basically, you, you come here, you, you do a SQL uh, variable, set it to blank, blank uh, character or empty character, and then you come in here, you just make sure you have a primary key. You got make sure you have a primary key. If you don't have one, go ahead and set up an identity column on that table. All right, somehow or other. All right, you got to have a primary key. Otherwise, this is this is this technique's not going to work. So then you put the name of that primary key here, and then you put the table. Make sure you include the schema. All right, and then you have then I um, concatenate a bunch of stuff in here. You can study that if you know study that as as you you know go through it. You have to look at it. But basically, what this is doing is it's going calling out to a system table called sys columns, and it's using that table, and it says, okay, where are all the columns in that table? So it grabs all the columns in that table, and presto, let's run it. We'll see what it does. It's not going to do anything. Um, we'll show you what, how it runs. Okay, so basically, it creates that SQL statement, which looks like this. Just a, it goes to every column, does a union all, and puts them all together. Okay, so once you get this code. Um, actually, it cuts off at the end, even though it does sort in the variable. Um, there's a display setting you'd have to do to get it, just so you can get enough, depending on how your size of your table. Okay, so you might have to adjust it in configuration how what your display can have. But the, the variable itself is holding it; it's not. It has all the text in it. But basically, the concept is the same. It goes through every column and it does a select, and we do a uh, we store the name of the, the name of it as the name of the column as a key, and the value is um, we cast it to nvarcar max so whatever column has in it it's going to take it and uh, that's coming out of the dim employee table okay so we're getting all the all the information all right so that's what it produces so when you use this you're going to say okay i have this table xyz and i'm going to go ahead and put in dbo or whatever you have for your schema dot xyz and then you're going to say oh my key is xyz id okay then i put that, that there and that's pretty much all you should have to do all right um so that's the code very simple i'm gonna put this down in the comments section of this video so you can uh, play with that. Okay, so what I did then, after I got the code the way I wanted it, right, I had, um, I put that code, the code that, you know, it generated down here, and actually it, it ran that code, and it, then you see the, you actually see that that um, table, which is what, 9,768 rows, okay, and I think the initial table was, I don't know, maybe 200 rows, I'm not sure, somewhere in there, you can check it. Um, but, so what I do next is I take that that the results of that query up here and I copy it and I put it into a view right and I use that view I create that view and that view I use I bring it I get data on it from the um, from the uh, power power BI case is uh, V dim employee at as key value pairs right so then I come back over to my power BI I look at my model and as we widen one of these, there it is. There's the name of it. 
since it has a key value, Power BI is smart enough to just pick that straight up and match it with the key value over here inside the DIM employee. And if it doesn't, then you have to just create it. No big deal. And that's it. So then you have control. So now you can go back to your mod, your actual report, like I do here. Uh, these are just plain old table. Just using the table visual. And um, so I, I create this table using the DIM employee, the normal, somewhat not uh, denormalized table, right? And um, denormalized is you know, questionable how you say that in this case, but let's say it's denormalized. Stem tables are a little denormalized. Um, so that's that, right? So that covers, so I just put that in like here, but since all these different visuals are connected, right? So when I click here, it acts like a filter, acts like a slicer more or less. And then these two, when I click in this, this bubble, right? It is connected to, as you can see, since it's highlighted, it's connected to the dim, uh, dim employee as key value pairs, right? <clears throat> and lastly, this one, which is showing the um, the linked values. Okay, when you go down here, you'll see linked values down. As we go down, you'll see it better when we click on it. But basically, that's pointing to, again, let's expand this out a little bit. The same name of the view, but with notes. Okay, so um, then you just have to populate those through your SQL code. But it's not a big deal. But um, that's how I get the look and feel of this report. And I'll leave the rest up to you guys, but basically you just click on that side and everything looks quite beautiful. All right, you all have a nice day, night, wherever, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.